just want to make a short video of uh, work on my Ridley, which I take to Cuba um, as my sort of touring, uh, sport touring bike. It came originally with uh, cyclocross gearing, so I modified it to have a 3450 on the front, which works better for the road. And on the rear, it came with an 1132 and an Altegra derailleur. And uh, what I wanted to do was go up to this, which is an 1142. Um, I would have been happy with 1140, but this is an 1142. And I put a uh, road link, um, wolf tooth road link, uh, on here to extend the rear derailleur down a little bit so that it uh, clears the cogs. And it works great in all the gears except, and I fiddled with chain length quite a bit, so when I'm on the uh, <clears throat> fourth cog up, working perfectly, but as I go down to the third, it starts to rub here. Second, it's rubbing more. Eleventh, there's just too much chain slack, and that's because the rear cassette doesn't have the rear derailleur doesn't have enough uh, chain take up. I'll show at the end uh, the calculations for that. But what I'm going to do uh, as a fix is take off the road link and uh, put on an XT rear derailleur. You can see it's got a much larger um, cage and that gives you more chain take up. However, to use a, a mountain XT derailleur with an Altegra road group, I'm going to use this um, tan pen uh, also made by uh, Wolf Tooth. And that modifies the chain pull so that, uh, so that the uh, mountain bike rear derailleur will work on a road shifting system. To show one more time how the shifting's working, so if I go all the way up to the bay and uh, I can still shift onto the big chain ring. I'm doing okay there. This is absolutely at the limit though, as you can see, totally stretched out. So working, I mean, I know you don't use the big, big combination, but you always might make a mistake and it's good to not have a snap off if you make the mistake. Working fine as you move through the range. See the shifting is great. No issues at all with how it's shifting. But again, once you get down to the uh, shifting onto the small chain ring, at the end of this of the range, just does not have the chain taken. Working beautifully at the other extreme, which is where I want it. So arguably, you know, if you're going to try. There's no reason you couldn't go with what I've got here. You would avoid the big, big. And uh, there's enough uh, chain take up for that to work. And you could, if you were down to the small chain ring, you could shift all the way down to that final fourth gear and still be fine. This chain cut into slack mostly taken out and uh, it's turning fine. So that is workable. It's just far from ideal. So my first step is to take off the chain, find a quick link, back quick squeeze, key of that. I'm anticipating adding uh, all the links back on the chain right now. There's about three links missing for the current setup, but um, I'll go to the 116 link full length chain with the uh, new derailleur and hope that that's good enough. Anticipating that uh, what I'm going to do is keep this Altegra derailleur for the future with a smaller cassette when I'm using smaller cassette. So this piece of cable I'm going to keep alongside that in my storage and I'm going to put a shorter piece on here because I'm anticipating that's going to be too long. the cable. There's two pieces here. There's the Altegra road derailleur. It just comes off with, I think it's six millimeter, I think five millimeter Allen key. <coughs> Put that down. <coughs> this is the wolf tooth extender that was on there just to make space for, to get that road derailleur a bit more clear of the cassette that did its job but 
as I said, it didn't, uh, that derailleur still didn't have enough chain take up. So this one kind of comes with its own version of a wolf link, more or less built in. I put a bit of grease on the threads already. Turn that off. Interesting how close that swings to the cassette. But anyway, that's cool. Way more hanger than before. Not going to need a very long piece for here. Interesting, that doesn't really change position much, which makes it um, snugging up after the fact. And the Tampan Wolf Tooth folks um, say anticipate having to snug this up after a few rides due to chain stretch and stuff. I think that's pretty much what's things we all anticipate doing. Just going to rough this in here for the sake of getting it started. All right, looks good so So realizing it's pretty hard to see what I was doing there. Again, the cable comes through the housing, comes out here, it does a loop around the small wheel. Then we insert this fixing screw, which is not easy to do. I strongly recommend having a place for that screw to fall where you're going to be able to find it if it hits the ground. There we go, tighten that down. Such a tiny screw. Anyway, that holds the cable in place so it doesn't pop out. The cable comes out around this big cog through here, down, and then we lock it here. So that is a first crack at it. Let's get the chain back on. I've added a couple links back on to account for the um, Longer derailleur cage. Okay, so everything's been finished. Um, I kept an older chain on a new cassette, so it's not a hundred percent engaging, but that'll wear itself in within a few, within a hundred kilometers or so. I ended up using uh, the B screw adjustment, pretty much all the way in, for the purpose of bringing. The upper jockey wheel a little bit further away from the cassette so there's uh, better clearance a uh, fair bit of adjustment to the high and low limit screws in terms of hitting these two gears correctly uh, a little bit of fiddling with the barrel adjuster to get the cable tension right and here's the result so that's the big small combination let's work our way up through the gears quickly Okay, so that's the big, big combination. Again, you wouldn't typically use that. It's a no-no, but regardless, it's good to see there's still a bit of slack in the system, so it's not strained. Now I'll shift it onto the small chain ring at the front. So 5034 at the front. It's even working in the small, big combination, so that's the critical one. Work our way down the gears quickly. Okay, and all the way down to the bottom. So now we're on the small, small. And uh, even though you wouldn't typically use that gear, it's worth noting that there's still some tension in the cable with uh, the previous derailleur. At this point, it was uh, this chain was engaging into that uh, upper jockey and uh, there wasn't enough cable take up. So you can see it solved the problem. So pretty happy with, uh, with this setup, moving from the road gearing with a 5034 to an 1132 and swapping on a mountain bike rear derailleur, it's, uh, it's working nicely. It's going to help me get up some uh, monster climbs in Cuba. Uh, Grand Piedra, for example, was something I could not do with the uh, 1132. 
Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it interesting. I thought at the end I'd just go over how I came to choose the gearing that I did. This is a gear uh, ratio chart and on the horizontal axis it's the chain ring size and on the vertical axis it's the rear cassette cogs. Uh, the yellow shows the resulting gear ratios I have. So I have a low gear of 22 gear inches and a high of 125. That gives me a really wide range of gearing to climb uh, very steep hills, but also to be able to go reasonably quick with a tailwind uh, on the flats. This is the calculations that you would need to do for your own gearing, and this determines the cassette, the, the rear derailleur you need, um, which must match the uh, chain capacity calculation. So this is the options that I considered in terms of a derailleur. My current derailleur before I did the work was a uh, Shimano Ultegra 6800 with a GS size cage. It's rated at 33 teeth of chain take up, so it was a bit strained to do the 37 teeth that the calculation shows is needed. That shows there's a bit of fudge uh, involved in the calculations and uh, you can always uh, push the envelope a bit and just see what will happen. Uh, I also considered looking at the new RDRX800 uh, Altegra derailleur, which is designed for gravel bikes. It's rated for 39 teeth of chain take up, so that would have been a great option for the uh, 3211 cassette, but not sufficient for going up to the 1142. And then finally, the Shimano XT with the long SGS cage. Um, perfectly matched my uh, chain take up needs with a 47 tooth capacity so that was ideal and as you saw it worked it just required that wolf tooth tan pan which adds 50 to 75 dollars depending on uh, how you buy it uh, to the cost of the setup um, but it works really well the only thing you would uh, take into account beyond uh, this chain take up capacity is simply the largest uh, cassette cog that a derailleur is uh, capable of using. And again, there's a bit of uh, a bit of conservatism usually in the numbers. You can usually go up a cog or so, uh, based on my experience. But um, but again, the Shimano XT is designed to work with a 42 tooth uh, cassette uh, for a maximum cog size, and the Altegra 6800. Uh, is considered uh, okay with a 32 tooth cog. Anyway, hope that helps and uh, add any comments and questions you have below in the video. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.